Hello and welcome to study unit 4. Study unit 4 is fantastic. It is something truly new. Everyone will experience that this as new and everyone will experience it as major challenging. But that is what we want to do. That's why we study this course because we like challenges. Okay, so we are going to do three major sessions, but I divide the first one into two just to give you a, a chance to be able to to identify where your problems are where you are not going to have that much problems but so that we can later on save you the time and you can just watch the sessions the necessary so we are going to start with what it is a linked list and then we are going to do basic methods a pen to string to manipulate the linked list and then we are going to do more difficult manipulation methods and then in session three you design your own method and that is what we want to achieve we want you to be able to design any method for a linked list so let's jump into it let's first get to the idea the concept in java now you should watch this over and over and over again until you truly understand what you are trying to do because if we don't know what we are doing how can we focus on the how mm, then we are wasting our time so first of all understand what you are trying to do so the what of what we are trying to do is actually not that very difficult we are creating an alternative to an array so sometimes let's say a linked list is a alternative to an array so your question can be use an array to save 10 numbers or use a linked list to understand 10 numbers so i will first start with creating the need in your mind for a linked list if we look at computer memory we can draw it like so and say we add as every mem as every variable is declared in the um, program let's declare integer a then it can be four then we declare an array let's say of four positions and that array takes up those four positions let's say the array is called arr is there then we can um, declare integer 5 again and we end up declaring many variables in our memory now something that you might not know is that um, memory is cleared as the variables are not used any longer um, the garbage collector is a built-in little piece of java that does this for you so when a variable goes out of scope, when does that happen? When the method that uses that variable is complete. Let's say that B goes out of scope, that memory is available. But you, you have declared C again and then that one is filled up and it goes out of scope. So if I color empty pieces in the memory, if I shade them a little bit, your memory becomes fragmented. And when you want to declare an array, let's an array, then the positions of the array are stored adjacent in memory. And there must be adjacent spaces. So if I want to, if my memory is as it is now, if I want to declare a memory, uh, an array of four items even, I can't because there's two items, there's one, there's two. Then I cannot declare this array because there are not enough space in memory. Although there are four open positions, there's two, another one, another one, and another one. And so there's not enough open space. Can you see the problem with a, an array? Since the positions must be stored adjacent, next to, right next to, they are neighbors, one another. 
there might not be enough memory for an array, although there might be enough memory in total available. So that is our problem. Now, how does the linked list solve this? The answer is quite clever. A linked list will do, does not specify before the time how many elements there are, and those elements need not be adjacent. So, but it takes a little bit of extra space in memory. So if I take, for example, I'm going to put my first element there. Now, why is it two spaces? Mm -hmm. It is simply because my node, listen to the word node, in my linked list takes two things. It has the value that I want to store, let's say A is 4, so I want to store that A, but it also tells me the address of the next one. But that address takes a little bit of memory, actually only one byte. So it's just a very, very small piece of memory for that address to store there. Okay, so then the, you start, you go, you read the four, and then you go to the um, place where you can find the next position, and then the compiler has to go to that position and find the same. There will be a node, and let's say we score, let's say there's a five, and that one can go there. Can you see? that these nodes are not adjacent in memory. So from before I go on, you have to realize two things. The major difference between an array and a linked list is that the array is stored adjacently in memory. A linked list is stored all over the place. And each, each item is stored in what we call a node and a node has two parts the value of the item and the address of the next element the next node i can say so the value of what i want to store and the memory address of the next node mm. this is where the complexity comes in Memory addresses was never in your frame of reference. I tried very hard to put it there in the first study unit, even in the right in the first study unit. You will notice that I talk about memory addresses. So memory addresses are key to linked lists. Why? Because you have to keep track of where, the, where you can find the next element in the linked list. Let's clear this a little bit up and talk some more. When I draw a, a link, an array, you know I draw it like this. Bang, 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 bang. It's always adjacent. An array has an index. One starts. And I can say, give me the third one. That can only happen because they are adjacent in memory, and you know how many there are when you declare it. You will remember in study unit 2, we did this operator when we did tau, to say the memory, the computer will go and find the first element, and then go and find the element according to the index of that array. I'm now going to draw a linked list on both a, a silly simple one. You are never going to draw it like this. We will teach you how to do it properly. Okay, so. I'm going to only draw three elements. Okay, you know, three nodes. Okay, so there's my first one, there's my first one. Now, I'm not going to make this too easy. In memory, um, the addresses is, as you know, four-digit hexadecimal numbers. So here it comes. So I can say my first one is stored at position A4E. 
2. Now, I don't want to use an adjacent position for the next one. No, 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 no. My, f my second one is thought that B, um, B, sorry, that's a B, 2, 2, 1. And my second and my third one is thought at A, E, 4, C. If you don't know hex numbers, it's now a good time to Google it. Hexadecimal is a number system used for memory addresses. It has valid numbers from 1 to 15. But we don't write 10, we write instead of 10, we write an A, instead of 11, we write a B, and so forth. Um, in hex numbers, I should actually write a little radix there of 16, but it's kind of difficult to write neatly on these screens because you can't support your hand. Okay, so if that is kind of the addresses, where these items are stored, I have to do something to make sure each one knows where the next one is. One thing before I show you that, you know that this array also has addresses. Each element in memory, whether it's an object, an array, there's always a memory address involved. In study unit 1, I showed you that. Okay, so let's say we had four numbers, so let's add them there, just so that you have a reference. A four, a seven, a one. A four, say, let's add value to these. The four, say, how many hours of video you are going to have a look at, this study unit. The seven says um, how many hours you're going to study this before you get it right. And the one says how many hours you're going to laugh at yourself for taking so long to do it because it's not that difficult and you will enjoy it a lot. Okay, so four, seven, one. Okay, there's a problem. There I know where the next one is. What should I do? You've guessed it. I should tell this one two two one. Okay. Where's this one? What should I write here? A E four C. How many of you've got that? Okay. And but I have a problem. What should I write here? No, it's an empty address. They all start off as no. No means the null is a value of an address or any um, variable that does not have a value. Okay, two things, and then we'll take a break first. The first thing is how do I know where's my first position? Where do I start? I don't know. What should I do? I should add another variable here. And what should be the value? A, 4, E, 2. I call this variable head. If I don't know the head of a linked list, the head is the first position. I'm lost. I'm lost. I don't know where my link list is. And just to help us later on, we add another one, tail. And that is, you've guessed it, A, E, 4, C. Before I stop this video, there's something extremely important to understand right now. Sometimes an address becomes the value of a variable. These things are addresses and in here are values of a variable. And can you see that this variable's value is an address? Let me say that again. The value of this variable is an address. The value of head is an address. An address. What is stored in head? 
the memory address of the first position. What is taught in tail? The memory address of the last position. That's kind of crucial because it's a major thing in Java to know you are working with an address as the address itself, the place where a variable is stored, and you are taking that address and you are storing it as a value. Okay, let's take a break. Welcome back. We are still busy with the basic concept and we are moving towards understanding a little bit more in Java. But don't underestimate this basic concept. If you do get this, the Java becomes easy. There's one basic concept you need to understand before we continue. If I look at the array, and I, and I want to access the positions, they are all numbered. I can say give me position number 3 and I can access it directly. I don't want to have to start at the beginning because the compiler, what does it do? The name of address is the position of the starting number. When you declared it, you told the compiler what will be stored in there. So the compiler can compute the address of the position number three. Say that again. The name of an array is a separate variable containing the address of the starting position. You know that. Then by saying I want position number three, the com and by declaring it, you tell the computer what's in there so it knows how much space that element takes each entry takes and it can jump to the position, the starting position of the third position. Now, let's talk about a linked list. If I draw a small linked list, I know where's the head, remember. My question is, can I go directly to that one? Okay, let's say it's not the tail because you will tell me yes, but I know where's the tail. So that's the head, that is the tail. Okay, I'm going to draw this like many textbook does. To say I'm going to indicate that that's the address by making a little dot in there. I don't do it normally, I hate it, um, but that's for later. Okay. Can I access that element directly? The answer is a big, big, big no. I cannot. Why? Because I cannot compute it. I have to go from the beginning. I know where the head is. And I have to find it by visiting, by visiting each node. That process, or the process of walking through any list, has a very specific name you will hear all the time. Traverse. Traverse means go and meet every little one. So when I, I don't have to traverse the array when I want to access a specific position, but I have to traverse a linked list when I want to access a specific position. I have a special access to the first one and the last one. A very important thing that, <laughs> that makes it so difficult later. If you only know where's your next position, you don't know where you come from, you don't know where's your previous position. Sometimes some people do that, they might know two things the value and then the previous position and the next one then we call then we talk about the double linked list so you will see everything we do are single linked lists 
not double linked list. Single linked lists are far more difficult to implement than the double linked lists. So, but if you truly understand linked lists, single linked lists are um, uh, quite nice to, to play with. Okay, that's it. Now let's brag with what you know you, you, uh, by summarizing. A linked list is an alternative for an array. Up to now you only used arrays. Um, what is the differentiating um, characteristic? <laughs> An array is stored adjacent and a linked list is not adjacent. Okay, and now how, the, how do we achieve this? By with a linked list we store information about where the next one is. But we need to know where the first node is, and that we call the head, and it helps to know where's the last one, and that we call the tail. So each node in a linked list has two parts. Listen to the words, the data element, and the address, or the address, of the next one. Okay, very important, the thing we just spoke about, I have direct access to an array, but I don't have direct access. We call it actually sequential access. You have to go from one to one to one when you traverse a linked list. Okay, yeah, it's a little bit of a better diagram. Let's move me out of the way. Let's put me here at the bottom. Okay, so now we are going to play with it. As can you see, this is the same diagram of the one I had previously. Can you see the uh, head? Um, okay, let's talk about these diagrams. You are going to draw it, and it's very important that you draw it like this one. This number here and this one, and this one are kind of random positions in memory. Where do I get it? Why do I use those? Actually, I suck it from my thumb. Where are they? But they are valid hexadecimal numbers. Can you see? They are all in the range of hexadecimal numbers from each digit, each little digit is a number between 0 and 15, but I don't write 10, I write A, and I don't write 15, I write E. Okay, so those are fictional in a way, but that's the only thing that's fictional. This, after I choose them first, and then I use them all over, over and over the, the time, uh, again. So that one must correspond to that one. And this one, the tail, must correspond to that one. Okay, do you get this? And this is no longer a random number. It is that number. This one is that number. That one is that number. Very important to understand again what these small numbers are. They are the memory address of a variable, in this case an object. The memory address. Every memory uh, um, in all computer, all memory, has an address system where, so that they know where each element is stored. And this is the memory address of a specific variable. That is nothing new to understand. Now, uh, you can go back to study unit um, 1, actually. We say, if I say int a equals 4, there's a value, there's a type, and very important, there's a address in memory. And that address is like a, a hexadecimal number of Four digits, I just wrote five, so let's correct it. Okay, four digits. Okay, so 
you, do you understand this diagram or you'll be able to draw it please you have to use four digit decimal uh, x decimal numbers otherwise you will lose a mark you cannot just draw arrows you will lose a mark you now very important just to get you some sensitive the first part we call the element and the, um, the address we call the next it's a value like int a a is the value or the name of a variable the name of the data element is called element the name of the address of the next one is called next those are variable names and we call all of this a node and if we think carefully that first diagram is a really silly because a node you will not store if you go back can you see this is silly number just a primitive integer but you know that's not what we are going to do you know that we are going to store objects in our link list so instead of storing just a number we store an object there the name of an object is an ad is a separate variable containing the address of its beginning the name of an object is a separate variable containing the address of its beginning this is the start of that object so the element in fact is already an address so, so that part is easy you know where that was in a random number where it is stored in the address that you know that you know that you know that you know the important thing is to now understand that when I store an object in my element, that object is actually also an address. So how do I store a number there? <laughs> the answer is I use the rapid class integer. The rapid class integer is with a capital I. That's what a rapid class is. It is a class containing a primitive data element we will use it all over again so i'm sure you will get to know that and a rapid clause normally has an instance field called value value th that value will be six or whatever is stored in that object so object of the clause integer is stored in this diagram you cannot continue if you do not understand this. So if you do not understand, rewind, listen again to, to this recording. Okay, let's pause there for the moment and break the video so that you can watch it again and so that I can find a cup of coffee. Okay, welcome back we have a deal you do not continue now until you understand this diagram i think the most difficult at the moment or the thing that you might be behind is to understand something that you really needed to understand in study unit three already is that the data part the data part is also an address or address of the object that's going to be stored there but that's always the case in java whenever i declare an object i the, the name of the object stores an address so don't get too confused with this it's nothing new it is just how java works the name of a variable is a, or the, the name of an object is a separate variable that contains the address of its starting position now i don't want to say this over and over and over again so we are going to use the simplified version of the diagram but i don't want you to f forget how the original diagram looks because when we do our java you will have to have that in your mind okay 
so, so let's go a little bit more detail but I will do that on the diagram what you see here is a linked list in its totality what you what do you really see you see an outer clause let me write that a outer clause and a inner clause now an outer clause is a clause that's defined you only have worked with in outer clauses before and the inner clause is a clause which is defined inside another clause that's the inner clause now the outer clause <coughs> is the complete linked list but the inner clause is only the node so the outer clause contains the head and the tail and an element but each element each element is an object of the inner clause we call the outer class a container, a container, like in a bucket, like something you put other things in. There's my container, and I put, what do I put in here? You've guessed it, notes. But there's two very special things inside the container. And you've guessed it, the head and the tail. So, if you understand what you are trying to do, the Java kind of gets easy. So make sure you understand what you are trying to do. You are creating an outer class, a outer class with some name which contains the word linked list in, and we can uh, we create an inner class with some name that contains the word node and the inner class only has uh, or the objects each of these nodes is a object of the inner class but the outer class the linked list must contain the head and the tail as well now what's the data type of head mm. The data type of head is an address. The same type of thing as the data type of next, an address. Okay, we'll get to the nitty gritty, but just remember we said previously, sometimes you store kind of a value there. I know it's also an address, but bear with me. And sometimes you store only a um, address in a variable okay the linked list class is an outer class what are we trying to do like we created an, an array class in study unit 3 we are now creating a linked list class in study unit 4 that's the outer class we call it a container like a bucket or just a, a bin or something you add stuff into it it has two instance variables head and tail and it has an inner clause node the inner clause node has two instance variables element and next once again you cannot go forward if you do not understand this so go back to the diagram if you don't and have a look until you connect this slide with the diagram okay now a few things that we have to talk about um but uh, this is easy um i'm i've said this over and over and over again but let's go there there's a profound profound major difference between head and tail and a node object Head and tail are only addresses. This is a node. Can you see this whole thing is a node? It's a, one from that extended diagram. This is the head. A variable has a name, an address, and a value. A name, 
an address where it is stored and the value. Can you see that the value of head is an address? Okay. When we create a, n a new instance of n node, then it has a two, two instance variables, element and next, but this element, it starts off as as null like everything but then we are going to allocate a complete other object to it we are allocating an object to the element part and we will never allocate an object for head so how do we create an object what do we do in java to create this object to store there this is rather important. All of a sudden, you've done it hundreds of times. You use the new keyword to create an object to store in there. So you will say, make me a new integer. Then you, you have an object there. But head looks like node. What is if you compare head to node? What's different there? Carefully look at the difference. Node has an element and the next head does not have an element and the next. Head is only a single variable. But head is something like node. Head contains the address. And we should always tell Java what type of address it is. And what type of address it is, this is an address of a node. When we talk about an address in, in programming, we call it a reference variable. So it's a reference to a node. What type of it is it? It's a reference to a node. So here is where the problem comes. When we define it, it looks terribly the same. This, this element is a node and head is a reference to a node, but we never create the node itself. It is only the reference to the node. So, what does that mean? Is the answer is really here and here. If we declare head, we say head is a variable of type node, but it's only we, all variables of type node start off like that. But we will never for head do that, say a new node, because the moment we create a new node, the instance variables are instantiated. So only when you create, when you say new node, the node with the instance variables is actually created. Until such time, you only have an ad address. Now a trick question, why the E? What is this E all about? Do you know? It is the data type of the element. The element is going to be a, can you guess it, an E. The data type of the element is going to be an E. So if I clean up a little bit, this element is an object of the class E. Next is a reference to node E, the same as head. Let's look at the Java. My linked list class is my outer class. There it is. The name is my linked list class and it's going to store elements and those elements are of which type? Type E. You guessed it. Okay. My outer class has two instance variables a head and a tail 
And what are the data types? They are addresses of node E. So they refer to node E. They are not of type E. They are an address of a node. My inner class is a node. It has two instance fields. The one is called element. The one is called next. The element is of type E. That's what I'm going to store in my linked list. The next is similar to head and tail and address of a node. Okay, so if I look at my constructor of my element clause, this is important, the constructor of the element clause, I say it, re it receives the value to put in there, let's say the 4, but you know it's more complex than that, it's actually an address, but let's don't go there, and it, takes it, it will store it there, and very important, it will make next equal to no why is it making no equal to no next because when i add a new one i simply don't know where the next one is when i add a new one i never know where the next one is now there are many more methods here i um in my linked list class, we are going to write it, so relax, I just want to, to show you, this is, here yeah, I can now manipulate my linked list, but in all the classes, we put them right there at the bottom, oh, sorry about that, we put them right there at the bottom, we put our element class, or our node class containing our element, now some textbooks call it node, and some call it elements, my previous textbook them elements so if my I have a tongue slip off the tongue please understand uh, there are two things there's the node which is the complete part of the linked list and then there's an element there okay if you I don't suggest you go and find more videos on this because it's just confusing you but some books call this thing a data this data, the element part, the data part, and call the node part the element. So that's why, rather don't go and search other videos, they will just confuse you. Do you understand all this code? Make sure you do before you watch the next part of the um, video. Yes, you have done it. You've mastered session 1A. Now we are going to start with session 1b and we are going to get ourselves now in stuck into the java part and it is actually the way we present it is to also corresponds to session three how you create a, a method for the linked list class so we are going to create a linked list a method for the my linked list class in session 1b we are going to do two we are going to do a Bend and to string into separate part of the video. I you need to understand that I'm, I can't repeat everything over and over again. So you have to go back if you do not understand anything. So what does a pen do? A pen adds an element at the back of the linked list of a generic type. So in the exam. You can have a question, create an append method for the linked list that will receive a generic object and append it to the end of the list. We never indicate the parameter in the question. That's part of what you should know. But there is a parameter. Create an object, um, uh, create a method called append for the linked list class that will receive a generic object. Why we call it generic? Because it's of type E and append it to the end of the list. What does append mean? Append means add at the back. So, before we go there, 
if I draw my very simple linked list and I want a head sorry and the tail I want to write a method that appends one bang want to add one so this is now my new one can you immediately start thinking what must be done what was the address of the last ones element no so that one should change this one must be no and the tail was there the tail should move on hmm, let's go into the more detail on that so what does append do append adds an element to the end of the linked list so pictures 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 when I draw an empty link list, there are no elements to draw. Do you agree? But and head and tail will be stored equal to no. The value of nothing is no. Okay, after one element, I can draw my link list like that. I have a head and tail. Can you see if there's only one element in my link list? Head and tail are equal. That's crucial to remember. That's a trick. How do you know if there's only one element in a link list? Head and tail are equal, but they are not equal to no. Because here they are equal as well, but they are equal to no. They are equal, but not equal to no if there's only one element in the link list. But you, please, I, I can't emphasize enough that you really really understand that and that you do not um, remember that okay so if i add another element here what happens if i add another one there mm, this diagram is extremely important that new one needs an address from somewhere mm, not quite but almost okay so you get the new address that's your first thing you get a new address you store it there where the no was becomes that you you take whatever you have to store it in the element you make that one no and you set the value of the tail you set the value of the tail to the new elements address don't go forward pause until you see what you have done we are doing the four step method step one is to try a, and to draw a link list sorry to draw a link list and we are writing down the overall plan so we've drawn our link list now we are focusing focusing on the general case the fact that the link list is empty is a special case so the general case says that there's already elements in that linked list okay so you know that there's a number of things to do you can you have to create a new node you have to take the address of the newly created node and store it in next and you have to create, take that same address of this newly created node and store it in tail. <laughs> yes. I don't know why I did this on these slides, but I did. But it helps some students. So, first, I have to create a new node. Then, I have to create the address. Or I have to know where it is. We'll get to that later. And take that new address. It's this blue one. The new address. Um, the blue one. And I have to store it in the next variable. So therefore this green one should become the blue one. And I have to update tail. So the purple one. The purple one 
should become that blue one, that blue one. Stop and stay. Pause until you understand those three steps. This is the overall plan in the planning. So we are still busy with step one. Write down the overall plan. Can you see there's no Java involved here? Now let's do the Java. Hmm. One major thing you have to realize when you do Java is how do I get the address? Oh, sorry about that. How do I get the address of a new object? How do I get the address of a new object? The answer is something you know already for years and years and years. If I say um, something equals new and there's a name of a class, this new returns something. And that something new returns is the name. Uh, the address of the starting position. So if I say new node and I call the constructor, you always thought new only calls the constructor. <laughs> now you learn something new. New calls the constructor, but new also returns the memory address of the new object. Okay, so if I look at this line carefully, what do I do? I call the constructor of the node clause, so therefore I create a new node. And I send it a parameter, because that constructor needs a parameter. And I return, new returns the address. So, that thing new returns is actually an address. So can you see, I'm not really sucking these things out of my thumb. New sucks it out of its thumb. New returns it. Now how does the compiler work? Luckily we are not going in, there, in that detail. It finds an open position in the memory and it returns to the position, its value. Okay, so if you combine this with the previous slide, I know now what the blue star is because new gave it to me new created this node with the two instance fields so that is ticked with the new i know what the blue one is i can say tail dot next equals new node okay why how do i say tail dot Next, you have to distinguish between these lines. Tail equals new line. Tail equals new node is this one, the purple one. But tail dot next equals new node is the most difficult line there is to understand. And if you understand it, you will be you will be successful in linked lists. Now, let me try that. I'm going to clear up all my scribblings. What was the value of tail? The value of tail was a b d two. Yeah, if I'm in that code, tail is a b d two. If I say tail dot next, you want to tell me tail does not have a dot next. Tail is a single variable, and in a way you are right. If I say tail dot, the moment I say dot. And that is one of these things that's true ever, always, but something you've never used before. If I say tail dot, it says go for the computer, go to the address where tail is, and find the next there. The address of tail is abd2, 
go to the value of tail the value of tail is a b d two go to that dot read says go to go to that address okay where is that address a b d two here it is go to that address go there now i'm there there's an element and a an next and find the next so find the next at that address and store into that set that equal to new node what is new node new node's value if we use my values is a2 a20d store into that value store in there a to O D. Okay, let's say that again. Take what does this line mean? Yeah, I know it feels so silly to go into so much detail, but it saves you later. It means tail, you know tail only is a single variable containing an address, but when I use this tail dot notification notation i say go to the address in the memory which is the current value of tail what is that a to o d go there that's what the dot means go there and there you will find an instance field called next next go to tails dot next and set that next to a value and what is that value that value you find in new node now you and I know new node contains a value at that point and new nodes value is a 2 d where did it get it because it's the value the compiler returned when it created the new node okay so now I have done that step but I have to update tail because tail is no should not no longer be abd2 tail must now be a 2od and so therefore the last thing I do is I update tail this is the crux of the matter if you understand this slide understand thing linked lists you have one if you understand this you are there okay i'm going to start a new video so that you don't have to watch this over and over and over again because once you understand it it's kind of easy we ended the previous video by writing a lot of stars and stuff and you ended up by understanding this crucial 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 line here and you linked it to this block yeah please do not continue if you are not there yet in your understanding but if you are here we can continue now with the special cases what are special cases remember from the previous study unit those are the things that can go wrong and i think it is easy to understand that the major special case here we refer to it already is the list can be empty there can't be a linked list and we have to actually do more we have to add the link the element will be the first element now before I can continue, if the list is empty, head and tail has a very specific value, do you know what it is? You are right, it's null. If I add an element, what, what should I do? You guessed it, I should take my head, my new address and assign it to both head and tail so here it is let's move me out of the limelight okay i have an empty list i create a new element now i have to update the head variable and i have to update the tail variable 
and that's it. Do you believe me now that it becomes easier once you understand that previous slide? Stop and stare until you understand. Okay, now if you compare this with a general case, you will see it's almost the same, except that the general case you had to update um, actually the, the, the tail or the next of the old tail, and that was that difficult line. You had to update the variable. Uh, um, you had to update the next variable of the old tail. Okay, so what do I do? I added all the stuff from the previous slides here, and now we can write the Java code. And there's your append method. Oh, it would be wonderful if you understand all of this now. If not, be patient with yourself. Lots of patience to require. Let's go through this as if you understand everything and if I'm just going to say I'm a lecturer that can explain a lot of detail. Let's go through line 40. Line 40. I'm going to create a method append. Where I am I? I'm in the outer class. Remember we said there's lots of methods there in the outer class? Th this is one of them. I write a method append that's going to add something at the end of the list. What do we add? We add a very uh, variable from type E. The, that is now the one there or what object we are adding. It's going to end up in the element in the inner class. Okay. So item. What is item? Item is the name of the parameter, the thing we are going to add. In this case, the value of item is 1. So, my first of all, understand the heading carefully. What will append return? What does it give back? Nothing. Therefore, the void. Line 40, public, because we want other um, uh, classes to use this method of our linked list. Void, append returns nothing, it just do a job. Append, the name of the, very, uh, the method. E, the type of the parameter, meaning any type. Um, and item, the name of the parameter. Now the first step is the red star. That is to create a new node. So we will... What does it actually do if I ask you to explain in your own words what line 42 does? It creates a new node, therefore it calls the constructor of the node class. It calls the constructor of the node class. The parameter for that constructor is item. Where does it get item? It's its own parameter. Okay, so it provides item is the variable sent as parameter to the constructor of the node class and it returns an address of the starting position of the new node. It returns an address of the starting position of the new node and that address is stored in new node. It also created, instantiated the two instance fields of the node class, which are element and next. <laughs> yes, you thought you know what the Java does. And look at this line, it's nothing new, but you never knew what happens. So it does a number of things. It pulls the constructor, it creates the object with its instance fields, and it returns that address, and it stores it in new node. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is the one thing. Now this line 44 is we treat the special case. 
we treat the special case. When you, what is the special case? The, the list is empty. How do we test for an empty list? We simply say, if head equals to null, then we know that list is empty. And then what should we do? We should allocate the new address to both the head and the tail. Uh, this is a bit of a shortcut Java. It's two lines combined. It is head equals new node and tail equals new node. So it's two lines built into one. You can do that in Java, but the eyes should not have. Head equals new node and tail equals new node. What is stored? What is the value of new node? New node is an address of the new position. That's that blue star. So if the list was empty, I wanted the head and tail to be equal to the new node. Else, now the list is not empty. There's already one there. There's already one there. And now I have to be careful. This line 48 is the super difficult line to understand. That is assigning the green star, the blue star must go to the green one. Okay, let me say that carefully again. Take the value of tail. Take the value of tail, which is apparently ABD2. Go to that position. Go in memory to that position. That's what the dot means. There you will find an instance field next. Do I find it? Yes, I've got it, got it, got it. And assign to that the value of new node. What is new node? Oh, I just got it there. I assign it to there. So then I create, I make this tail, this value, I set to new node, which is now A2OD. But then I have to update tail itself. Tail itself must be equal to new node. I think this is cool. Do you think it is cool? I can promise you, if you understand a pen, really truly understand it, you are there. Then you can actually tick link list. We will get to the test program later, but that's not too hard. It's very similar to the test programs of issue 3, the array test programs. So that's not hard to do. You can um, relax now for the moment because you can add an element to a linked list. <laughs> you can create a linked list. But if you can't print it on the screen, you won't know if you were successful. So our next video is all about creating a two-string method. But take a break now. Rewatch this until you understand, especially, especially line 48. Good luck with this. This is not easy. This is really, really not easy. Be patient with yourself. Welcome back. Take a moment to reflect on what you've learned. A lot. You've learned what a linked list is. You've learned how to add elements to a linked list. And you also learned how to manipulate the linked list as variables to, to actually access all those funny variables involved. But it's fine if there's items in a linked list. But you now need to figure out how to reach those items and how to print them. And for that we are going to do a two-string method. But I've said earlier, for these links you are actually gathering tools, things to do. And traversing the list is one of your tools. Traversing means visit each element in the list. Go from the first one to the second one to the third one. Now you know how to do that for an array. Now you are going to learn how to do that for linked list. It's not that difficult, but once again, a lot of strange new things. And not only to be used now, these are the building blocks for later. Okay, 
So the general case is that there's things in the list. And we are going to use this as another example to show you how you can use the, our design steps and how you should use them to tr um, design a method. So, okay, let's start off with what's the plan? We are traversing the list. What should you always do? You should do the design steps. Um, how would you call it? You will call it with, you will create a linked list and then you will call it with um, the method called toString and it will return a string like all two, two string methods call. Let's draw a diagram. Okay, I, I desperately want you to get used to drawing these diagrams correctly. Now, you and I know this is a simplified version, but um, you can always draw the simplified version. Okay, now you have it, drawn the diagram. Um, what should you, what are the steps? The steps are these to our overall plan. Create a result string, the thing you want to return, which is empty, and then traverse each, traverse the list going to from node to node to node to node, and call the two string of the element. Call the two string of the element. Remember, we are writing generic code. We don't know what is in there, but we can call the to string of that element and take that result and add it to our um, result string and we return it. This is actually very important to understand, to really understand that each element here is of type E. You don't know what it is. It can be a cell phone account, it can be a car, it can be a employee, it can be anything. And you want to add something about it to the result string. You don't want to add the address, although it's possible, but you don't want to add the address. You want to call that element to string and add the result of that to string to the final result string. Okay. Let's go for it. There's a snack. You learn something extremely, extremely important. You learn that you can have an additional pointer. Sorry, let me just go back there. You can have an additional pointer variable. We call it pointer, PTR for pointer. It's like a window, something we are going to look through. It's like spectacles. I'm going to put my glasses on and I'm going to look at one element. And then when I look at the next one, I move pointer. Mm, this is very hard to get a really uh, uh, at the beginning, so be patient with yourself. Pointer is like a, a viewfinder of a camera. I'm pointing my camera to one position. And when I'm happy, I'm going to move my camera on and allow it to be to point to that one. And when I'm done with that one, I'm going to move my camera on again and look at that one. I'm going to move my camera on again. Okay. Remember that hard line we had in a pen. We can say pointer dot element. It means to go to the current address of pointer. You should find an instance field with the name element and do something with it. Pointer dot element is one of the most important lines you will ever understand. Okay, but before we get to the Java, before they get to the Java, there's a loop that you see I do every, I do something, go on, do something, go on. 
We start by writing this in general English, although I know that is challenging for you because English is 90% of your second language. So we initialize the result string, we create a new one, and then we traverse the list. Can you see I indented, like you guys know Python, so you know that's inside the list. At every element. What should I do at every element? Can you see moving from one to another to another? But at every element, I should call the to string of the element and append that to the result string, add it at the back of the result string. And then when I'm done with it, I return the result string. Okay, I don't want to confuse you, but you always ask, how does that differ from an array? When I traverse an array, I do it with a for loop. But because an array has direct access, I can simply use the index. But I can't use an index when I re traverse a linked list. I have to move from one position to another, to another, to another. We call it sequential access. And pointer, PTR, becomes sort of my index, but don't confuse it now with a number. I never know, is this the first one, the second one, this, it's not important. It's important to know that it's my current one. I'm going to write the big word current. It is the current node. It's the one I'm currently looking at. And then I have to advance pointer to point to the next one. How do I advance pointer? And this is the weirdest line ever. You, to start off with, I can say pointer equals head. Then pointer becomes that address. Pointer is similar to head and tail, just an address. So if I then refer to pointer.element, I say go to pointer and go and find an element there. So now you know how to get to this one. But how do I move pointer on? Say it. I know I didn't hear. Say it again. Louder. How many of you said pointer equals pointer dot next? Did you say that? Go to pointer, find the next there. And to replace the old pointer with that. Give yourself a tap on the shoulder if you've done that yourself. If you haven't, don't worry. But don't move on if you don't understand it. Okay, so traversing that list. Okay, there's your answer. Pointer is pointer.next. But when are we done? How do we stop? How do we stop? When do we reach the end of the list? The answer is that null there. We stop if after we've said pointer is pointer.next. If that equals to null, then we know we are at the end of the list. There's some Java for you to stare at. And these are the programming steps. They are not Java, Java. That's not program code yet. But you can write it Java like we said pointer is head. While pointer is unequal to null, 
continue, continue, continue until my pointer becomes no. Pointer is pointer dot next. And the result string adds the element. <laughs> My code won't work. Yeah, why not? What will be missing? Where's the first element? Because I advanced my pointer first. I should not advance my pointer first. I should actually swap these two lines. But I've done it on purpose here. The purpose is to make you think critically about it. I start pointer at head. And then I advance the pointer. But I should first get that two string working. I should first call two string before I advance my pointer, otherwise my first element will be missing. Okay, so we have to carefully look at that. And why it is different in the code is we did not, here we use the while, here we use a for. Mm, you, this is a strange for. Many students prefer me always using a while. Many students want this to be a while and that line inside the loop there or at the end, at the end actually, because that's what is happening. That falls line should go there at the end. But, 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 but. These things become so trivial. Easy. That we always use a fool. Sometimes I, sometimes I use a fool. Sometimes I do a while. I want you to just be so comfortable with it that you don't mind. Okay, let's go for the Java. You will notice this is not that hard. I, st this is the two string method in the um, outer class. So, my two string method needs nothing to do its job, but it's going to return a string. Therefore, the string. I need a result to store the string in and I start it up with an opening bracket just for the fun so that my output has a bracket there and a bracket there. Okay, I need a window, my window that's going to go from position to position is called pointer. How do I declare it as an address to a node? Will I ever say pointer equals new node? No, there's no new year. It's a not, there's no new year. But you need to understand, if I had a new there, pointer would have been like this, and I wanted pointer like head and tail only in address. Go back to previous videos. But perhaps you, you truly understand now something you did not. Okay, so now my for loop. A for loop can be quite the same as a while. An initial value, so pointer must start at it. When should it stop while it is unequal to null? Remember from study unit 2, this will be the final check. It will be that additional execution will check this. At the end of every iteration, what must go there? That is why I say that line will be just before that bracket. Pointer is pointer dot next. That part you understand. I go to pointer, I see what it is, I take the address, go and find the dot next there, and take that value and insert it into pointer. And what do I do at each position? I say result equals result plus 
go to that address, find the element, and call that one to string. Okay, now this if here is not important. I just want to add commas, but I don't want to add a comma at the last one. So I say if dot next, pointer dot next, is the next one is not zero, is not null. So if I go to pointer, I go to that dot next. If that is not zero, I know I should add a comma. And I add a comma. But if I'm done with the four, when will I be done with the four? You are right when pointer is no, but remember I advance pointer here. This pointer dot pointer dot next is executed here at the end. So if I'm there after the four, pointer would be no, and I can add my closing bracket. And I return the result. There's not a lot of more I can explain. The thing that you have to get is that you can stare at this code until tomorrow. You won't understand it. And I don't want you to memorize it for the sake of just memorizing if you don't understand. I want you to understand all the detail. And you've had now about an hour's videos from session one to understand everything. Let's see the test program to round off your knowledge for session one how all of this is working. Now this is a test program like the ones you've written for your array. This line creates, oh, sorry, this line creates the linked list and it tells it what is E. E is the wrapper class integer and my list is called the list. Compare this with the test programs of study unit 3. It is extremely the same. It's just called my link here. My link list instead of my array. And now I'm going to add elements. How do I add something to a, a link list? I call append. But I have to create a object. You are going to use marks, lose marks, lots of them. If you only add a 6 there. But it's not about the marks. It's about the true understanding. The element part of the node. The element part that gets a value here. Remember you are calling the constructor. And the constructor of the inner class receives a E. Needs an object. Not a primitive data type. It needs an object object so you want to create an object of the class integer there can you understand why it is really 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 wrong to only send a six even if the compiler might be happy you must create an object of the type e we specified that e is the integer okay <laughs> so much work for something so easy System out print line list. But you know it's an implicit call to do string. You see how easy this is. Your test program is the program that the programmer will use. Okay. I want to, before I end this session, I just want to go back a long way. A long, long, long... <gasps> Back, 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 back. Can you imagine we went, ah, oh, here I am. I want to come here. What is the constructor of the inner clause to? It takes the parameter and store it in the element. Was it necessary to have that this keyword here? No, not really. You know it's not necessary. It, um, it's only because the parameter is called element. So those two are the same. And the this is called, it makes sure it re refers to the instance variable. 
this refers to the instance variable because the parameter and the instance variable has the same name. You have to specify the instance variable with this keyword. I I do this because it is kind of like um, standard practice to call it the same, but it's terrible programming. Um, I would have preferred to say that EL and to say that EL so that they have different names. But because they have the same name, you have to use this to make sure that, and this identifies the instance um, field there. Okay, so just make sure that you don't get lost in the overall picture. We said on this screen we are going to add many, 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 many more methods there. We have added two. We've added append and we added to string. So you can download the code for the first session and look at the entire thing and run it. Congratulations. You made it. You understand to string. Good luck with session two.